Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. All right, you guys, so I want to come on here and talk about the whole Hosea Chanchez situation, and hopefully I didn't butcher his name. I think I said it right, though. But this entire situation is just really disturbing and sad. If you guys don't know who Hosea is, he was on the TV show The Game on BET, and that was, like, a really good show. I loved it. He did a good job in that role. But I'm the one putting the butts in the seats. And that's why I got you passes for tonight's party. And I threw in a couple extra. <laughs> You trying to buy me off with tickets to a party I'm going to anyway? He's also been in a lot of movies and things like that. But the other day he took to Instagram to basically out his pedophile, okay? This man was the father of his best friend and started molesting him at the age of 14. And he's finally found the strength within himself to speak about it. So this entire situation is just really sad and disturbing. I want you guys to go ahead and check this out and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. So Hosea says this, before these words got here now, they had been written and erased many, many times. This time I made a choice to be man enough, human enough, brave enough, and maybe even crazy enough to keep them here. So here it goes. About a year ago, I remembered something that I tried my whole life to forget. Actually, I didn't try. I intentionally forgot and remembered the conversation I had with myself when I was around 14. I convinced myself that no one needed to hear about this. People will judge me. People won't care either way and that the truth can only hurt me, my family, and everyone else's family. So I locked it away until now. It was summer, and I was about 14. I'd gotten a ride home from my friend's father, who this day seemed insistent upon dropping me off himself. It seemed odd until I later realized he had been prepping me for this long ride home for a while. A week before this day, my friend's dad was asking me what type of girls I liked and if I had sex with a girl yet. He kept saying... I bet you have the girl screaming with that big peen. I bet you can come a lot. I didn't know at the time, but he was trying to see where my boundaries were, and he was using a false hypermasculinity as his way to sniff around my comfort level with sex and privacy. This became a regular conversation where he asked me questions about sex and wondering what girls think about me sexually. But for some reason, he would never ask me anything around his son, my friend, or anyone else. It was only with me and always when no one else was around us. Little did I know these secret conversations were his testing my level of privacy and secret keeping with him. I was always uncomfortable and shy about talking about sex with him. Obviously, I was only 14, which was the perfect personality trait for this predator to prey on. Shy and introverted. That's how some predators start, by finding your child's weak, innocent, shy spot and exploiting them through the lens of secrets, sex, masculinity, girls, and trust. Parents of boys, Please pay attention to this. He knew my father wasn't in my life and that my mother was a single mother, so he would always tell me I was like his other son, so I can trust that he's always looking out for me, further building my trust and commitment to this predatory agenda. On this one day particular, he insisted on taking me home. I knew something wasn't right. My intuition was telling me that it was not right, but I got in the car anyways. Shortly after the drive began, he detoured and pulled down a dirt road, pulled over and said that he wanted to talk to me about school and what my plans for the future are. He worked at a university, so he said that he's only looking out for me and my future. Then out of nowhere, he said that he wanted to see what girls are going crazy over. Then he reached over, unzipped my pants, and told me to trust him. I remember he kept saying, trust me, you will like it. He pulled out my pen, put it in his mouth, and molested me in the car. When he finished, he said, it didn't mean nothing if the guy gives you a blowjob. It's not intercourse, so it's not sex. Then he told me he's a very powerful man, and if I ever told anyone, he would ruin my life, and no one would believe me anyways. I was 14, a young boy, a child. I'm choosing to come forward with this now in hopes that my truth helps free someone from their guilt and shame at the hands of a predator, rapist, pedophile. I hope it helps to stop someone else from being molested, raped, assaulted, taken advantage of as a kid. I often wonder if he's done or doing this to other kids I'm sure I'm not the only one I wouldn't be able to live with myself if he had if he left this earth and I didn't hold him accountable for what he has did to me or any other kid so in an effort to heal the damage that's been done I'm choosing to expose him now to finally hold this man accountable for his actions 
Isaac Sanders from Montgomery, Alabama is a disgusting pervert, a punk, a coward, a sexual predator, a rapist, and the worst of all, he's a pedophile. This man molested me when I was 14 years old, and for years I was afraid to face the truth. As a man, a black man, I always thought acknowledging this would make me less of a man. I was afraid of being judged, talked about, laughed, or even worse, not believed at all. I asked God to help me become the best me I can be, and in that process, allow my life to inspire, uplift, heal someone else's pain and trauma. I pray to God this truth helps someone. I pray to God it helps me. The end, the beginning. Hosea E. Sanchez. 16 hours before he came out with that candid confession, um, he had posted this book, a picture of this book, and it's called Letting Go, The Pathway of Surrender. New book, hashtag let's grow. So that's what he posted and that's the book that I'm assuming encouraged him to come out and out that pervert, Isaac Sanders. All right, so you guys just heard me read that. And that was just really sad and disturbing. But kudos to you, Hosea, for finding the strength within yourself to tell your truth and to tell your story. It not only helped to release you of something that was no fault of your own, but you sharing your story is also going to help a lot of men and a lot of young boys who are going through the same thing, who have been through the same thing. Because so many times we talk about the molestation of females, the abuse of females, but we don't talk about it when it comes to young men. We dismiss it. We act like, oh, well, if a young boy is being touched or fondled, especially if it's by a female, Somehow he wanted it. Somehow because he's a boy, he doesn't deserve the same sympathy, the same, you know, protection as a young girl. So I'm glad that he chose to speak on this. I, for one, was very curious to see who this man Isaac Sanders was. So I started Googling, trying to find him. And I found a very, very interesting article. This man not only molested Hosea, but he kept on doing this to other boys at the school that he worked at. I found this article, he was taken to trial back in like 2008, he was fired from the university because several people said that he was harassing them, molesting them and doing things to them as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and read you guys this article. You guys go ahead and check this out and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. So this article was written back on October 31st, 2014. And the title says, Sanders denies allegations, plaintiff yells, don't lie. So this is what this article is saying. Isaac Sanders, former vice president for advancement of East Stromberg University, testified Thursday that he never sexually harassed or assaulted any student, a statement which prompted one of the plaintiffs to jump up from his seat and yell, don't lie. Following the outburst, the jury was quickly led from the room and the civil hearing at the federal courthouse in Scranton was temporarily suspended while order was restored. Several county security officers, as well as the U.S. Marshals, were called in to monitor the rest of the Thursday's hearings. If you act up like that again, you'll be in a cell downstairs, Marianne said to the 26-year-old plaintiff. The case ended Monday afternoon when the same plaintiff became too distraught to continue with his testimony and fell silent, unable to answer any of his attorney's questions. Sanders' attorney, Harry Coleman, requested a mistrial after that incident, asking how could the jury be expected to remain impartial after witnessing the plaintiff's outburst. Miriam denied the request and called the jury back into the room. Sanders, 66, now of Montgomery, Alabama, said he was one of eight siblings, the first man in his family to graduate from college. He also said that although he is separated from his wife, they live nearby each other and are on good terms. They had three children together and four grandchildren. Sanders repeatedly denied the plaintiff's allegations that he touched or harassed any of them. He called the claims disgusting and pretentious. Sanders did acknowledge using his own money to pay for one of the plaintiff's eyeglasses and car repairs, but said that he expected to have the money paid back to him. He also reported giving another one of the plaintiffs one of his old suits. Sanders admitted to paying $1,000 for one of the plaintiff's courses and $811 for another plaintiff's summer courses so that he could graduate. The money came from funds set aside by the East Strangeburg University Foundation. Both plaintiffs said that they did not know Sanders was going to pay for the courses, nor did they request him to. 
Earlier in the day, a 37-year-old minister at a Baptist church in Alabama told the jury that Sanders put his fingers in between his buttocks during a trip to Washington, D.C. in 1999. At that time, Sanders was a vice president of advancement at Stillman College in Tulsa, Alabama, where the man was a student in 2000. Sanders went to ESU. Sanders, the man, and another official from the college were going to take a limo to a nearby restaurant to meet the lobbyists as part of an event. The men were seated next to Sanders. When the limo driver opened the door, the man began to exit the vehicle. He said he felt a finger poke him in the rear end. The plaintiff's attorney, Albert Sonny Murray, said he caught the man to testify at the trial to highlight Sanders' history of abuse. The man had filed a complaint with Stillman officials following the incident, and Sanders was ordered to stay away from the student, but violated that order when he later approached the student and attempted to take a photo with him. On Thursday, Sanders said it was the first time he was hearing of these allegations that no one from Stillman ever spoke with him about the incident. A total of six students filed civil lawsuits against Sanders in 2009, but three had their claims dropped due to the statute of limitations. Sanders has never been charged with a crime, but was fired from the university in 2008 after the university hired an outside law firm to conduct an investigation. The case alleges that Sanders used his position of power to provide campus jobs and other benefits to African-American male students, but in return also used that position to make unwanted sexual advances on them. Sanders has maintained his innocence, saying he has never engaged in any inappropriate sexual behavior with students. Honey, like they always say, everything that's done in the dark will and shall come to the light. So isn't it ironic that back in 2014, this article was written. I've never seen this article, never heard of this man. This man was accused by students at the university he worked at of sexual abuse and, you know, harassment and everything else. So much so that he was sued to have four years after this article was printed, Hosea Sanchez to come out and basically blast the same man. I believe everything that Hosea Sanchez said in that um, Instagram post. And I also believe everything that these men are saying in that article. Because one thing about a pedophile, a leopard never changes its spots and a pedophile never changes what they're attracted to. If they were molesting young kids 20 years ago and they hadn't been stopped, trust and believe they're gonna continue that same pattern. So this entire situation is just really disturbing. I hope they catch that man. And I'm so tired of this whole talk of statute limitations. If you did something to a child, there should be no statute of limitations. This man needs to be locked up and arrested. And I hope that something comes of this because for Hosea to come out and basically, you know, put everything out there, his reputation, his name, things that people might say about him, for him to, to risk all of that because he wants to put the truth out there. I definitely hope this man... Isaac Sanders gets his day in court and ends up in jail for everyone that he's abused and everyone that he's mistreated. So this entire situation is just really crazy. But thank you, Hosea, for being brave enough to tell your story because you don't understand how much you being brave enough to tell your story has helped so many young men out there who are possibly going through the same thing. So kudos to you for coming out and just being honest about what you went through as a young child. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation concerning Hosea Chanchez basically coming out and talking about his molester, Isaac Sanders, only for me to find that article on Isaac Sanders basically being accused of the same thing almost 20 years later by different groups of men at these different universities that he has worked at. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right. Deuces. <laughs>